The National Oil Company, NNPC Limited, has recorded another feat with the commissioning of its CNG auto gas facility in Lagos. This is a major boost for Nigeria's energy transition plan, one that is considered a critical turning point in the development of affordable, sustainable and secure energy alternative to bring succor to Nigerians following the removal of fuel subsidy. With the commissioning of the plant, it's now clear that the country is fully on course with its transportation emission reduction goal that's not only more efficient but ultimately impacts the economy. Hello there and welcome to the program. This is Energy and You, a program that brings you developments in the energy sector, focusing on the activities of NNPC Limited. I'm Egusa Egumbo. Welcome. Also on the show, the National Oil Company inaugurates a 14-man Board of Trustees for the Host Community Development Trust Fund. And in further alignment with the company's vision, the Corporate Communications Division holds strategic retreats for staff to improve productivity. It's a loaded package, so sit back and relax because energy and you begins now. Thank you for staying with us. Now let's begin the show with a rundown of top energy stories and international oil price performance for the week. Oil prices saw a slight change at the start of the week as investors weighed the move by producer group OPEC Plus to extend deep output cuts well into 2025. Brent futures for August delivery were down 14 cents to $80.97 a barrel after falling to a session's low of $80.55. Japan's top city gas supplier, Tokyo Gas, is looking to add more U.S. natural gas assets. The company's president said it aims to expand its gas-related businesses in North America after its recent acquisition of a U.S. shale gas producer. The Japanese company paid $2.7 billion to acquire Texas-based natural gas producer Rockcliff Energy in December and agreed to purchase a 49% stake in North American energy marketing and trading firm ARN in February. UFD, the electricity distribution network of Spanish energy company Natorgy, will invest 1.34 billion euros until 2027 to reinforce and digitalize its electric grid. The figure represents an 11% increase from the investment in UFD's grid between 2020 and 2023. Japan and the European Union have agreed to work together on policies related to creating demand and supply for clean hydrogen, as well as to cooperate in advancing technologies to develop the new fuel. Japan sees hydrogen as a new and cleaner source to gradually substitute liquefied natural gas, part of the country's path to carbon neutrality by 2050. And for Europe, hydrogen is one of the options to phase out usage of Russian fossil fuels. Norway's gas exports to Europe fell sharply this week as a shutdown of the offshore splainer hub halted operation at the Inyama onshore processing plant, lifting European prices to their highest level this year. You're watching Energy and You. Now, nothing binds like a promise, and nothing divides like a promise broken. That's the scenario on ground after last year's promise by the federal government to provide a cheaper alternative to petrol following the removal of subsidy on PMS. Well, last week, the promise was fulfilled with the commissioning of a 5.2 million standard cubic feet per day compressed natural gas plant in Lagos. It's one of several other CNG stations to be delivered across the country soon. Minister of State for Petroleum Resources Gas Right Honorable Eperi Peeku who commissioned the plant at the Isolo industrial area in Lagos, described the occasion as a critical turning point in the development of affordable, sustainable and secure energy sources in the country. He said, through his courageous decision to eliminate fuel subsidies and promote the acceptability and broader use of LPG, President Bola Tinibu has brought about several fresh beginnings in the lives of Nigerians. We are resolute to bring the benefits of CNG adoption 
closer to Nigerian people. And projects like these are a major milestone in achieving this objective. Our gathering here today is a testament to the unwavering commitment of NNPC Limited and its partner, Transit Gas Nigeria Limited, to support the federal government objective of utilizing our abundant natural gas resources to accelerate our nation's economic development and growth. In his remarks, the group CUNNPC Limited, Mr. Mele Kiari, said to maintain energy security and provide more access to CNG by the Nigerian populace, NNPC has reached a final investment decision, FID, with Axele Limited to deliver six CNG mother and service station plants and stations of 5.2 million standard cubic feet per day capacity, each in selected locations across the six geopolitical zones, including the FCT, to ease access to bulk CNG. He stated that the move was in addition to NNPC retail's phased deployment of CNG in over 100 stations across the country, as well as other joint venture partnerships on CNG. And this is the largest facility we have for CNG in the, in the country, and we are going to replicate this. We will replicate this, so we have selected locations that will make it happen in six geopolitical uh, zones, putting them in locations where uh, ease of delivery to other states can be much easier. They are not necessarily centers of any geopolitical location, but they are carefully selected locations where SCNG will now be available to every part of the country as we continue to grow access to pipeline gas uh, in, 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 our, in our country. In his speech, the Lagos State Governor Babajide Sanwalu said the establishment of the CNG plant aligns perfectly with his vision for economic development, job creation, and industrialization in the state. We also are thinking through and we're working with so that in another four or five years, you know, we will see a full compliance, you know, and we'll have seen a total turnaround, you know, of um, our business development to ensure that we're part of this, this, this conversation and the government are an important stakeholder. So once again, I want to thank you um, for bringing this to us in Lagos. I want to congratulate us, congratulate ourselves for this initiative and to say to you that Lagos State is a willing and capable partner that will ensure that this comes to state. The Ogun State Governor, Dapo Abiodun, represented by the State Commissioner of Environment, Mr. Ola Oresanya, said the state is supporting capacity building in CNG conversion to ensure sustainability and promote economic development within the state and beyond. They were taking advantage of the value chain, the business value chain, in the CNG utilization. And where is that value chain? It's in the conversion business. The Polytechnic, the Gateway Polytechnic in Ogun State has been dedicated as a Polytechnic, as a center to train young men and women. And we're in partnership with Nigerian State Organization of Nigeria and several other organizations to train young men and women in conversion. So conversion is moving on in Ogun State right now. And that the instrument, the legal instrument that will support even the subsidy to incentivize this conversion is also in place. On his part, the Managing Director of NNPC Gas Marketing Limited, NGML, Chief Justin Eziala, expressed gratitude to the federal government for creating an enabling environment to actualize the gas development initiative. So as we celebrate the commission of this plan today, we reaffirm our commitment to enhance value for all Nigerians by promoting natural gas utilization for the country for the country. And as we optimize the natural gas resources, together we can propel Nigeria toward a future where CNG powers our vehicles, lights our homes and industries, and sustains our progress. I'd like to express my gratitude to the federal government for creating the enabling environment for this initiative. The leadership of NMPC Limited, GCU and his uh, executive vice presidents, especially our EVP Gas and Power and New Energy, uh, of course, for their passionate leadership, ensuring energy for today and energy for tomorrow. The CEO of Axela, Bolaji Osunsanya, thanked all stakeholders, especially the NNPC, for his consistent vision towards the delivery of the plant, stressing that his company's many years of preparation have now meant a golden opportunity to deliver cleaner, cheaper energy to Nigerians. The second will be that 
our many years of preparation has finally met the opportunity. Our many years of preparation, and I'd like to thank everybody who has been part of that journey of gas utilization generally. And I think the subsidiaries of NMPC, our friend, the new programs director for the presidential CNG initiative, it needs a driver. Once you, you have a vision, there must be a program around it and it must be driven. Thank you for all that you do. And I think this is testament to all that effort. The NNPC CNG station Ilasa Maja is a 5.2 million standard cubic feet per day capacity station that can serve vehicles and also supply gas to industries and other companies. The facility has dispensing points for filling cars, buses, trucks and tricycles utilizing CNG and can fill about 3,700 cars or 500 trucks and buses every day, thereby providing a constant supply of CNG. Time now for our weekly updates on the war against crude oil theft and pipeline vandalism by NNPC Limited. The war on crude oil theft is on and the industry-wide security collaboration on hydrocarbon infrastructure continues to record remarkable progress. Between the 25th and 31st of May 2024, a total of 372 incidents were recorded across several locations in the Niger Delta region from several incident sources. Tantita Security Services, Shell Petroleum Development Company, Pipeline Infrastructure Nigeria Limited, Nigeria Ajip Oil Company, Maton Engineering Company, NNPC 18 Operating Limited, NNPC Command and Control Center, and government security agencies. A total of 148 illegal refineries located across several states in the Niger Delta were uncovered and destroyed in Ogu 6, Tombo 4, Lekuma Abiyama, Bile, and Ka Adama in River State. 42 illegal connections were discovered and removed in the past week in East West Road, Oyigo, and Onosi in River State, Kwale, and Ogbe Udu in Delta State, and Owaza in Abia State. It's the four inches that we're talking about. We're saying within four inches. So they cut it from here, cut it from here, and join it to the delivery line. Twelve cases of vandalism on oil wellheads and pipelines were uncovered in Ohaji Egbema in Imo State, Eduwini in Bayelsa State, where a barricaded oil wellhead was vandalized. Umwajiloki in River State and Orubiri, where oil spills from a vandalized oil wellhead. Eight cases of oil spill were recorded in Akwaudogwa in River State and Okoroma in Bayelsa State. While 99 VAIS infractions were recorded at sea, 40 wooden boats conveying stolen crude and illegally refined products were seized and confiscated in Okreka, Bile and Ebocha in River State, Obodo Omadino and Owugwangule in Delta State and Oporomo in Bayelsa State. Several oil pits, reservoirs, sacks and tanks filled with stolen crude were discovered in rivers, Edo, Delta and Imo State. 14 vehicle arrests were made in Patani, Owa Aladimma and Ugeli South in Delta State and in Egi 3 in River State. 99 of these incidents took place in the deep blue water, 28 in the western region. 163 in the central region and 82 in the eastern region. Between the 25th and 31st of May 2024, 22 suspects were arrested. For NNPC Limited, there is no backing down on the war on crude oil theft until the menace is eradicated for good.
To report crude oil theft or suspicious activities within your area, call the numbers on your screen now or send an email to report at stopcrudetheft.com. Handsome rewards await the whistleblower. Do your part. Report oil theft today. NNPC Limited has reiterated its commitment to foster and engender prosperity for all by ensuring sustainable oil production and safety of assets, especially in the oil producing regions of Nigeria. To achieve this, the company has inaugurated a board of trustees to manage the host community development trust fund. This is in line with the provisions of the Petroleum Industry Act of 2021 on host community relations, sustainability and the environment. Energy and you covered the inauguration ceremony. The passage of the Petroleum Industry Act marked a new era in Nigeria's oil and gas sector, addressing decades of unrest in its oil producing communities due to lack of development. With the introduction of the Host Community Development Trust, as stipulated in the PIA, a framework for sustainable prosperity in the oil and gas community was established. Today, NNPC Limited put that prosperity in motion by leading the way with the inauguration of 14 Board of Trustees to ensure the implementation of the Host Community Development Trust. I think it's a major milestone that we are achieving today. So the essence of this body is to support us so that we can grow. Then the question is, what is the need for you? As we grow, our budget grows. As our budget grows, what happens to you? Our Your fund also grows. The trustees are to manage the trust fund efficiently, which will foster a stronger relationship with the host communities and engender a positive sense of belonging, which will in turn ensure the security of oil facilities in the region and boost oil production for the good of the nation's economy. I think it's a major milestone for you, you all, those communities, because from now on, you will be on the driving seat, deciding, defining, executing, implementing growth and developmental projects, activities within your domain, but for your own prosperity. The establishment of the Host Community Development Trust, as mandated by the Petroleum Industry Act, reflects the collaborative efforts of the Nigerian Senate and the House of Representatives. NNPC Limited, while taking the lead in ensuring the development of host communities, is intentional towards its success. The Board of Trustees have been trained on the basic oil and gas exploration and business planning for non-professionals to guide them through the new assignments. Still to come, NNPC's Corporate Communications Division engages staff in a marathon session on strategic communications to promote the brand. Stay with us. We are the largest single asset holder in Africa's oil and gas industry and poised to be the dynamic global energy company of choice. We are constantly innovating to be the prime company for energy sufficiency. We are NNPC Limited Energy for Today. Energy for tomorrow. You're watching Energy and You. Now, in a move aimed at enhancing productivity, efficiency, and developing strategies for effective communication, the Corporate Communications Division of NNPC held a three day retreat in Abuja. The maiden event with the theme Getting More Things Done was aimed at promoting personal and team values in tandem with the company's values of integrity excellence and sustainability. The event brought together management and staff of Corporate Communications Division company-wide. In his welcome address, the Chief Corporate Communications Officer, Mr. Olufemi Shoneye, highlighted the importance of productivity and efficiency in corporate communications, setting the tone for the epoch-making event. It is also uh, a time for us to recharge. And it is also a time for us to more importantly, we commit ourselves to our aspirations and uh, goals for corporate comps. And um, by the end of these two-day retreats, we should all be going back to our goals 
more refreshed and um, ready to tackle uh, new challenges with renewed strength and vigor. Speaking on enhanced personal and team values for greater corporate productivity, Mr. Feladro Toye shared key attributes of brand values, purpose, success, and sustainability. It, it means I don't have to meet everybody in NMVC to judge NMVC. Yes. That simply by experiencing one person, I believe that all of them are the same. If NMVC is going to be a solid brand, you must what? You must do good. If you want to be known for good, do good. Not only must we be doing good, we must be seen to be doing good, and we must produce a good feeling in the heart of anybody who hears anything. Other guest speakers, facilitators, and in-house resource persons shared valuable insights on diverse relevant topics centered on effective communication strategies, stakeholder management, diplomatic relations, leadership in crisis management, fostering strong ties and robust relationship with the National Assembly, business values and sustainability. Communication does matter. Think about the CEO of NMPC today. What skill is he called to display every single day of his working life? Engineering? No, communication. Either listening, engaging, motivating, sharing values, sharing visions. So I want us as communications people not to think like outsiders, necessary evil. Communications people are not necessary evil. They are central to the function of any business. If as an individual you do not upscale your skills, then of course you lose relevance. And that is why a retreat like this is important for exchange of ideas, for cross-fertilization of views, and also for self-rejuvenation. But the problem that we find in most organizations is what is called the guardian syndrome. You know, in every company, you have some people, the guardians of the realm. They have this attitude. This is how we have been doing it since 1980. They don't listen to ideas. They are not ready to take a any new ideas, and that is the worst thing that can happen to any organization. And for me, the value of an exercise like this is that, you know, you keep routine. The Senate is a creation of the Nigerian Constitution, and all authority, all sources, all powers in Nigeria today derive from the Constitution. The Senate is empowered to investigate anybody that spends any cobo from monies appropriated by the Senate. So if what you spend can be traced to any appropriation, then you are open to investigation by the Senate. Learn to work with, with the Senate. So NNPC Limited Communications Department relating with National Assembly or any other stakeholder, be hard with knowledge. Be hand with it, equipped with it. Once you have that, no matter what happens, once you are in error, you know by yourself. By virtue of its establishment, the memo is very clear that NMPC can do everything, provided it's legally, commercially, and is there viable. We have a lot of non-energy business and non-core business today. And what we say we are going to do is to rationalize those business. What is rationalization? We incubate them, mature them to viability. But when we think that it's going to be a distraction for us, as such, liquidate them, divest it, so that it won't be a distraction to us. So this just summarizes, in a nutshell, what NMPC corporate strategy is. And it's very, very important, as we've been told today, that we need to be part of that strategic thinking when we are formulating strategy for the company.
Some staff in attendance share how the retreats will impact their roles in contributing to the company's success and sustainability. I've learned a lot about media relations. I've learned a lot about um, branding, the brand image, the value of the brand. So I'm going to put that in my own personal work to ensure that everything I am doing, I'm thinking about NMPC, I'm thinking about the name, I'm thinking about the brand, I'm thinking about our uh, image out there. As a communications uh person we are not on the sidelines of the business we should leave the sidelines of the business into the boardrooms into the decision making our uh, platforms you know so uh, that's another thing I've learned how to manage crisis what to say what not to say and then uh, the kind of things also to put up you know on the social media or, or the other platforms as well because such things they get to people and they can either send a positive message or a negative message and you don't want a negative message out there as well. We go back to our different BUs, we're going to use all these internal communication tools, stakeholder management tools to manage the perception of the the perception of the company. Like if you look if you look at what was said during the retreat, a response time, even if we are not responding but we are relating with the center, a response time in terms of crisis can solve a lot of problems. With this I'm prepared of equipped to do my job better as a manager, both for my subordinates and for my superiors. And I believe that I'm going out there to be the best that I've ever been. Re-energize the uh, team. Uh, we've talked about co collaboration, team building, stakeholder management, um, taking ownership, leadership, all those qualities that uh, we have learned, we have to put them into practice to make corporate communications better. The three-day retreat has provided the necessary motivation and momentum for the staff to meet their deliverables as well as tasks and targets necessary to move the company forward. And that's our wrap on the show today. Thanks for staying with us. If you missed any part of this episode or previous episodes, you can catch up by scanning the code on your screen now. Remember to also follow us on all our social media handles showing on your screen to get updates of events in Nigeria's energy sector and other activities of NNPC Limited. Thanks again for watching. I'm Egusa Igumbo. See you again.